Welcome to Wining and Dining with Jim White. It's the program devoted to introducing you to the people who create the flavors you love. And if you're into Thai, mm-mm-mm. Go look no further than Asian Mint, Nikki Pinawatana. Pi- <laughs> I, I know how to say your name, Nikki. Yes, you do. Pinawatana. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Nikki Pina. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Yeah. Well, of course, it's it's a name that I, I've said in our audio interviews without any trouble at all. Yes. We're not even going to edit this. You see, I could stop and start <laughs> over again, but I want you to understand that Nikki Pena, Pena, Pena Watana is with us. I've never done this. I love it. I've introduced it's you a million times. It's all fun. I well, love it. Anyway, we've wasted, I've wasted five minutes of the beginning of the show here. No, we're good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you want to, you want to mangle my name? Jim Wite? W- Wite, yeah. <laughs> is that right? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. And that, that's Tan's last name. Is he standing here? So Actually, no? his last name is way shorter, and I debated and debated and debated. Yeah. It's His last name is Noisiri. Okay. Way easier. So this is your maiden name? This, this is my is maiden, maiden name. name. Pinya uh, Watana. Yes. Pinya Watana. Pin, see? See, my, my tongue was nervous. I know. What am I, you know? It's like overwhelming. It's funny. Americans look at, at, a, at a name that has more than five or six letters in it, multiple syllables, and they freak out. There's 12 in mine. So <laughs> who knows? People just call me Nikki Asian Mint most of the time. That works for me. Nikki yes. Asian Mint is with us on the show. And uh, just some delightful things. How are things going? I mean, you've got th- still three locations. Any new ones announced yes, or in the work? we do have four now. Four? I birthed a new restaurant have I, I've been four sleeping. months ago. <laughs> oh, darn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Where is it? This is in Richardson. This is totally out of the norm. I was looking for a new challenge and I found it. We basically opened a fast, casual Thai bowl concept called Enjoyment up in Richardson ah, off of Campbell and 75. That is so cool. Talk more about it. Fast, oh. casual means you can come in and kind of uh, grab and go or order at the counter and then you pick it up or do you bring Pretty it to much. them? or? What? Oh, we do the bring out. So basically the process is or my um, a vision behind the concept, how we came about it is we wanted to be the restaurant. Our mission is to feed souls with fast, fresh Thai bowls. And with that, we are very high tech. We have order at the kiosk. We're one of the first few restaurants in the Dallas area that's doing it. It is so fun. People get overwhelmed, but once they do it, they're like, oh, it's like learning a new app. Um, we're doing cashless. We're be- we are very innovative. And I know there's a lot of businesses that are also becoming cashless as well. It's uh, faster. You know, you don't have to stand there with somebody trying to give them change. Mm -hmm. Um, People standing behind you, they process it faster. It's safer for our staff. You know, they're not carrying cash. We're not bringing cash in and out of the restaurant. It all around um, is pretty much, as you know, becoming the new norm. And we, I've noticed a lot of times whenever I open a restaurant, I'm always about one or two years ahead in technology because I love it so much. High-tech kiosk. You order, you grab a number, you go around the corner. We have an amazing hot sauce bar. We have like five, six different types of hot sauces, uh, Drama Queen being one of them. We do fish chili sauce, sambak. I mean, I love sauces, and it's all about adding when you do Thai food. Um, we have uh, iced tea. You get a number, you go down. We uh, serve your bowl under seven minutes, and you have approximately 12 options and those are all the items that you have come to love from the Asian Mint brand, but more have a Thai spin street style. All of our proteins are on a skewer. They're grilled, marinated in a homemade Thai marinade. And um, people come in, they're loving our fire noodle bowl, pad Thai bowl, fried rice bowl, red curry bowl, peanut bowl, sweet and sour bowl. We have a coconut noodle soup bowl going on. We have clear noodles, all um vegan or vegetarian as you however you love it and um the majority of the menu items are also gluten-free that's amazing that's fabulous congratulations thank to you. you we'll have to get up there and see it now you, you mentioned drama and queen the sauce but why don't you uh, talk a little bit about that you've got a, 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 a jar container yes yeah. so um drama queen is a thai crispy chili mm-hmm. but honestly it goes on everything and it's amazing I want it to be the next sriracha. I want people to experience this and be like, oh, my God, it's 
so good. Yeah, I love it on pizza. I love it on burgers. I throw it on fries. I don't, I don't always throw it on Thai food. I really think about more of these high, you know, maybe higher fat content items that are comfort food to us in the States. And it is amazing on it. My friend um, acquired this recipe by marrying into a family that makes this over 100 years ago. And they used to serve it to the royal family in Thailand. Ah. Um, so her descendants from that side of the family, no one really wanted to pick it up. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to do it. She branded it Drama Queen. It is uh, so fun. Um, and actually, I'm going back to Thailand next week to uh, go and join her launch party that she's going to have for this uh, product. But I really want to see it go global. I think um, it's just something that makes your food so amazing. It's an enhancement condiment. It's just You can throw it on anything. And you're serving this at, at Asian Mint and Comfort? We or? will be yeah. selling it oh, okay. by the right. jar or the, um, we have these little Ziploc packets for travel, which she came up with and I think it's amazing. And um, we have been serving it to our super regular mint fanatics. They are loving it. They're like, can you please bring me back a jar? Um, and they get hooked. It's such an awesome product. It's so yummy. All right. Well, we'll have to try it. You've uh, had had an amazing career. I, your your restaurants uh, opened since uh, what two thousand five, two thousand four. End of two thousand and four. Okay. Yeah. And started as the Mint, and then Asian Mint. Always Asian Mint. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're also recognized in the community as quite a business person. Which one do you think of yourself first? I mean, do you think of yourself as a chef or a business person? I think of myself honestly more of a business entrepreneur Mm -hmm. Um, that's my background I went to school for entrepreneurship and marketing up in Boston at Babson College and my entire family on my dad's side were all entrepreneurs so I think I've just been surrounded in that area and I always think of that first my passion is feeding people I love to feed I love to serve and I honestly when I was going to school up in Boston I was always that dorm or that apartment that was cooking and making things and I was like watching Martha Stewart and coming up with you know making all these dishes and I was like okay I have all these things so come and eat it and it just became this table a place where we would come and eat and and I just kind of married the two somehow and I did El Centro College because I really wanted to learn the um, commercial kitchen and I did a pastry degree there I love it just kind of fell into it. You know, you follow your passion, but you have to be purposeful and have a mission and a drive. And I think that's really what keeps me going. I was going to ask you about El Centro. Talk a little bit more about that program and its significance uh, for not only Dallas, Fort Worth, but I mean, uh, anybody. I mean, chefs are kind of sprinkled all over the country who have graduated from that fine program. Mm -hmm. El Centro Culinary Program is... So amazing. Steve DeShazo is the head of the culinary program there. And he he pretty much has pretty much up the level of that program in the past couple of years that he's been there. He has gotten amazing chefs to become professors down there. I'm so envious of all the students that are going down there right now and getting (laughs) the education at a very economical cost. You know, the industry, you coming out, if you don't have a lot of experience, Um, You don't get paid too well, but it's the hard work that really gets you moving up and getting to where you want to be. It's one of those, you know, you grind till you make it and and you get to learn these amazing experiences. And El Centro honestly gives you that amazing foundation, the connection um, of having an opportunity into and a career in the area in the Dallas. And we really what our goal is, I'm on a board called the... uh, Texas Restaurant Association Education Foundation with Steve and a couple of amazing other chefs. And what our goal is to basically procure an awesome um, people to come into our industry and really make Dallas shine. We are kind of tired of losing all our people, you know, to all the other big cities that they think, you know, it's going to be making and all that. But we really, our goal is to keep them in Texas, keep them in Dallas foster them, mentor them, get them all into the community so we can all make Dallas an amazing place from a food perspective. Good for you. Thank you for the work and uh, for the uh, wonderful endorsement of a fabulous program at El Centro. 
Asian Mint, it's a real family affair. In fact, your husband, the chef, is here who refuses to come on camera. But talk a little bit about the family dynamic at your wonderful restaurant. Very, very family oriented. Um, I started it with my husband. He has said, I want to be behind the scenes. I don't want to be up front. So I'm like, okay, I'm the spokesperson. Totally fine. Um, I have come to uh, an agreement of how to do all this. And it's been amazing. Um, my mom works with us. She does all the paperwork because I am not great at paperwork. My brother uh, runs the uh, Oakland location that's been around for ooh, 10 years now, going on 10 years. Mm. And we open Inwood. All of our managers that work for us and even our staff, they all have been around with us, if not five years, 10 years, 15 years. My manager, Jeep, um, has been with me forever. It is honestly a very family environment. The culture, the people who come in and work, they stay. We foster them. We mentor them. Um, family, family is where the food and the heart is. Indeed. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, the, the, the moniker, if you will, uh, uh, New Bangkok and Fresh Asian Fusion. Because it's not your, it's not your, you'll pardon the expression, it's not your mother's or father's uh, Thai restaurant. Not particularly, but we like to call it New Bangkok style because um, if you've been to Thailand, Bangkok is honestly the melting pot, mm -hmm. almost kind of like Hong Kong. People like to say of all these different South Asian countries and cultures that come in and they blend and, you know, all of our recipes have like a little bit of Chinese influence in them. And um, it's just, it's not the traditional Thai cuisine that you would and here's here's a way good way to explain it how I explain it to my customers um they always ask you know how how do you explain your Thai food whenever you go to a Thai restaurant the chef or the cook is normally the owner of the restaurant right right so depending on where they grew up is it northern Thailand southern Thailand southeast mm -hmm. Thailand just like here in the Dallas my analogy is barbecue so imagine if you had Texas barbecue versus Kansas barbecue and all that. They're not the same. Some have more of a spicy flavor, some more sweet, some more um, heavy on seafood. So when I say new Bangkok style is because I grew up in Bangkok. My husband grew up in Bangkok and um, we bring forth that flavor profile. It's not overly spicy. If you come from the southern Thailand, you're going to get spicy food. If you come from the northern, it's more uh, bland, so to speak, compared to the other um, states. Or the northeastern, which is all the papaya salad, all the lap gai, the khao niao, som tam, lap nam tok, which we all love. Um, it's just a little bit different flavor profile. So if that analogy makes sense mm -hmm. to you, Jim, perfect. Makes that's perfect how, sense. That's how I explain it. Makes perfect sense. Which concept are you thinking about growing now, the Asian mint or the comfort? My goal would be the enjoyment concept. But then again, as the you enjoyment, know, I'm sorry. Enjoyment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it all depends on where, you know, who are we trying to feed and um, what makes the most sense. I'm having a lot of fun with the new concept. It almost like is birthing a brand new restaurant. You know, nobody really knows the brand the process, the food, but once they come in, they get hooked. They're like, oh my God, this is really good and it's fast. I can bring my kids. I can come back on doing um, a quick lunch hour or I come here for a study time because we're right next to UTD. And I'm seeing the uh, adaptation of the our clientele, our mint fanatics, I call them. We are having a lot of fun. Um, and the one of the another main reason why we went this with this new concept is because the lifestyle of the people today versus 14 years ago when we opened Asian Mint is very different. We're so fast paced. We're so on the go. We're on our computers. We're working from our home. We would like to spend more time at home, but maybe not behind the stove. So, you know, all those delivery services all around are making a bang because that's the lifestyle that people have come to um, enjoy and want. And this concept lends itself very well to our lifestyles today. Does Asian mint cuisine travel well? I mean, are, it you, does. Yeah. If you think about it, you know, just like Chinese food, we're always thought of as that takeout place. And I'm so excited that Thai food is now, you know, whenever you watch a, a movie on the big screen, they're like, oh, what are you guys ordering tonight? Let's get Thai food. You know, <laughs> I yeah, love yeah. it when they say that. I'm like, yes. Um, just ha realizing that Thai food has become 
the comfort food of people at home because it's so fresh, it's so flavorful, it's not over sauced, not over soyed, um, not over oiled, and I just feel like nourishing people that way, it just puts them in a good place where they can go to change the world in the best way possible that they were supposed to. Ah, you've got such a wonderful attitude about that. I, I appreciate that. It, it's infectious. So I love to be around you. And, I love being around you. Oh, well, thank you. Even though I mangled your name. <laughs> oh, we're all good. It's just a name. Then you're Watana. <laughs> See, you got it. <laughs> Well, let me ask you, this This is a cute story. I hope I don't mangle the setup on this. Uh, it, people would not realize it or even believe it as well as you speak. But I read that you got sent to this country because you weren't keeping up with your English studies. <laughs> yes. Tell us about that. Okay. So it was a bet. Um, I was a ninth grader at the time, and my mom's from Texas. My dad's from Thailand, and I grew up in Thailand. At around uh, 15 or so, my mom said, hey, if you can just at least speak English while you're at home, I don't have to ship you to the state to pick up the language. Teenagers, yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah. No. Peer pressure. <laughs> Peer pressure. <laughs> um, she even sent me to an international school, Romandy International School. Um, half, of the cl- half of my classmates were Thai, so we were still speaking Thai. I wasn't picking it up. I wasn't speaking or pretty much keeping up my end of the bargain. Um, So she's like, you know what? I'm going to send you to Hockaday for summer school. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like fun. I fell in love. So much fun. So they have a boarding school department there. I finished up the summer school and I said, mom, I'm ready. I want to come back. So I went back to Thailand, finished up my grade there, and then was sent over to finish my high school career at Hockaday. But as as a an ESL student, English as a second language ah. student. So now you're a hockey daisy. I am. That's pretty <laughs> and cool. And always will be. <laughs> What's uh, what kind of a you know bond does that create for you? Uh, I mean, um, with different generations, because I mean. Once, once you're a hockey daisy, I mean, it's a tight-knit group, right? It is. It is an amazing supporting community, I have to say. I didn't realize that because I was probably a part of a smaller community in the school as a boarder, as a non-native Texan. And um, so I created a really – I have great friendships of students from all around the world – Um, in the boarding department, but once I came out and came back and started Asian Mint, um, the Hockaday community just flew in and be like, you know, we love what you're doing. And it's so funny. I, I, I didn't even realize it probably until a couple of months in after I opened Asian Mint that I was back on Forest Lane and in green and white again. I thought it was like, how did I not even think about this? So subconsciously, you know, it was meant to be. And um, the community is extremely supportive. I love it when I go into the restaurant today and the parents bring in little kindergartners or middle schoolers and they come in and they're like, can you please come over and talk to my little, to my daughter? And I'm like, I would love to. You know, they go to Hockaday and we, we talk and they get so excited and the parents are like, look, look, she went to Hockaday and look at what she's doing, you know. It's just an inspiring, inspiring time to be able to be a great I call, you know, my mentors femtors because a lot of them are females. Mm-hmm. And um, it just kind of happened that way. It's like building each other up, supporting the little ones, bring them. I'm really big on education, like I said, sure. with the um, Education Foundation through the TRA and the GDRA. And I'm also a part of La Dames de Escoffier International, which is a, an organization for women. And what we do here in the Dallas area, our chapter Uh, throws an amazing event called uh, Dame Good Party every time in March to raise funds for scholarships for women to come into the culinary business. So we have scholarship funds at El Centro, um, a lot of different colleges around Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, and even in Austin. It's a great program. It is. A lot of very talented women involved in that. Yes, you probably know quite a few. I know quite a few. (laughs) I keep looking for them to add an honorary male in there. Right. Somewhere. Oh, we would love to have you. You know it. 
uh, my mama didn't raise no fool, as they say in Texas. When are you going around a bunch of beautiful women who can cook well? <laughs> we'll just have to maybe throw Vicky in. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a great I idea. I think, you know, who knows? Well, thank you for all of the work and all of the service that, uh, that you're giving to them. Uh, not only GDRA, but Texas Restaurant Association and La Dame de Scoffier. And, uh, but I'm sure you look for other areas. There are many other areas that you personally, not a- as a group, are interested in. You mentioned mentorship. What are some other projects that you're doing? Um, I mentor a lot of my staff. Mm-hmm. I love, I've found, you know, I stay in my lane and I realize that just by doing what I do passionately and, you know, working hard, I have attracted other people through the social media program or anything, you know, everything's out there in the world to see. And they come into the restaurant and they see um, what we're doing, how we're serving, how we make people feel when they leave the restaurant. And they want to be a part of that. And I create uh, managers. We call them mentors. Mm. So they mentor the young people. And we, funny enough, we take in a lot of kids that are um, either going to Richland College or UTD and we're kind of like their first job. And with that, we get to use that time. I secretly tell our mentors, it's not going to be so secret anymore, but you know what? Let's make them the best human being that they can be because all the skill sets that you can learn in the restaurant applies to anything else they want to do. You will learn multitasking skills, communication skills, social skills, um, selling skills with all of these skill sets, teamwork, um, all of those, I want to make them the best candidate if they ever decide to go into, I have a couple of kids in architecture who wants to be an engineer. And engineers are not talkative. They're very introverts and they don't want to, you know, put themselves out there. But I tell them, use this space to practice. You are going to meet over 100 people a day Talk to them, communicate. They're here because they want to meet you. They want to talk to you. They want to connect. Use this space to hone on those skills because you know what? Those are skills that are going to be best um, used when you're doing an interview process. Um, And they're like, okay, that makes sense. It's clicking. And that drive, we have to drive them, drive, drive, drive. And then at the end of the day, if you're a server or anybody in the front of the house, it is a sales position. You are uh, working off of a tip base. So that's another drive. So I love watching them blossom, you know, coming into their first job, making sure they come in to work on time, their uniforms pressed, they come in ready to go, you know. I, I realize that I have been gifted um, a platform an area to not just feed people, but to be a part of the community and build it up the best way that I can. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I feel you, like I'm talking too much. No, 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 no. That, it's, <laughs> hey, you're the guest star. <laughs> I just hope my, my philosophy is sh- short questions, long answers. I, you, so, well, you you're amazing at it. <laughs> ah, thank you. You uh, mentioned your trip to Thailand. Uh, mm-hmm. Why is it important for you to, to get back to your roots and I know you travel there frequently. Um, it's home as well. Mm-hmm. Home is where the heart is, honestly. So wherever my family is, that's that's home. Dallas is home. Uh, my extended family on my father's side still lives in Thailand, so I get to go back. But it's really about the food. I'm like, where am I going to go eat? What am I going to eat? I eat probably 10 times a day there. Um, I really rebuilt my itinerary (laughs) based on restaurants where I want to go, the beaches, the fruit, the vegetables. Um, It's really about going back to eat, Mm. honestly. (laughs) So when people come in to see you in the restaurant, you'll be happy to give them some suggestions if they're traveling to Bangkok. Absolutely, all the time. I um, am building, honestly, some connections in Thailand because I have, uh, funny enough, a few staff members who've gone back to Thailand and went into tourism. So I'm like, I have somebody that I connect you with. They are very familiar with the Dallas area. They speak the language. You would be really comfortable with them. I get a request all the time. When are you going to have a trip? Let's do a tour. Let's do a trip. I can get like 10 people together. I'm like, hmm, that sounds like a lot of fun. So, you know, 2019, I might do a few of those. We do cooking classes here in Dallas, and we have so much fun. It's just sharing your love and your passion about food, Thai food in particular for me. And it's just 
it's just an amazing, amazing connection. That's great. Mm -hmm. We're going to cross the time-space continuum now and take you to Asian Mint for a kiss cooking segment from Nikki. What you going to do? It's got to be simple and straightforward. I am doing pad thai. It's going to be mm. fantastic and super simple. One of your favorites, one of my yes. favorites. Everybody loves pad thai. Is it hard to make? Can we Not make? at all. If we once we watch you, we'll know just what you to do. You will know. It's going to be so simple, and you'll be like, "What?" Because we have this amazing sauce that we pre-make for you. That's probably the one that is most time-consuming. But can I go ahead and start? Let's go. Yay! Okay. okay, I got my fire going. My pan about medium hot. Uh, as you can see, there's less than seven ingredients here. You always want to start with a nice hot pan. We added our yummy protein. We got eggs, obviously. Another thing to get this dish out pretty fast, you know, in case you have some kids who are crazy hungry and need that time crunch. I have some protein that I already uh, part cooked. I have chicken, shrimp, and some tofu. Wow. Yeah. You don't have to choose. I mean, you can get No, it all. I like to do it all. The way we serve it in the restaurant is with all three um, for one price. It's pretty awesome. They'll be like, what? I get all three proteins? Absolutely. So this way, um, a little note on our tofu. What we do is we have a non-GMO organic tofu. We buy it uh, firm. And what we do is we cut them into um, strips and we flash fry them because when you put it in a hot pan, especially in our restaurant in a wok, mm -hmm. it's so hot that the tofu could kind of dissipate and get all mushy. Mm -hmm. But this kind of keeps it, makes it firmer and it keeps it together. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So. And how long generally does this cook? I know you're doing it by sight. Mm -hmm. So as you know, make sure your chicken's cooked. As long as your protein is cooked, you're safe. Okay. <laughs> your shrimp turns uh, orange, your chicken turns white. You make sure it's nice and cooked. Um, it is that simple. And we have our rice noodles here, gluten-free. They uh, come in a dry pack. You can literally have it kept in your pantry. And what we do is we soak them for about 20, 30 minutes. Okay. And they come nice and palatable and soft. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of water so it can steam those noodles okay. up. Now, most of these ingredients, I'm sure, are available at uh, <clears throat> all the better supermarkets and yes. so forth. But there are also some great Asian markets where people yes, can shop. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, you're right. All of these ingredients you can get at any supermarket now. They have the Asian aisle and they have these noodles there. Pad Thai has become so popular, has become a stable in the American lifestyle. It's that comfort food and that's why people come into our restaurant for it. So yeah, the only thing you want to stop by Asian Mint to get would probably be the sauce. The sauce. Mm -hmm. The sauce at the Tom Thom store or any of the groceries around here, uh, supermarket and whatnot, they're actually really good as well. So I, I don't. I think that's a good place to do a one-stop shop. But if you want the Asian mint flavor, then pick one of these up. Okay. And what kind of flavor are they looking for when they shop for that? Literally, it will just say pad thai pad sauce. Pad thai sauce. Simple okay. enough. <laughs> Keep it simple and straightforward. <laughs> that's right. So as you can see, our noodles are nice and soft. One of the key tricks here is you want to make sure that your noodles are cooked all the way before you put the sauce in. Mm, okay. That is because our sauce, pad thai sauce, has a high sugar content. It is made of palm sugar. Sugar. It has uh, tamarind juice in it, so it has that sweet, savory, and tangy flavor profile. Mm -hmm. But because it's high in sugar content, it will wrap around those noodles. Yeah. And then if you have uncooked noodles, mm -hmm. it won't be so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are almost done. You let mm -hmm. that sauce, you can smell it. It smells so smells yummy. So good. Mm -hmm. And um, another trick that I like to do for the home cook is we add some paprika. Again, at home you don't get that hot, hot wok like we do in the restaurant. And this paprika will give it that nice smoky mm. flavor that you're looking for from a hot wok. Mm. Little trick. That's a great trick. Thank Any, you for sharing. Oh, absolutely. Hey, and thank you for expanding with <laughs> enjoyment. Oh, the new yeah. Location. It's so fun. Yeah. I was there all day yesterday. I'm there most of the time. And it is just an awesome new challenge for me. But my goal is to feed the people in this day and age that are on the go. 
-hmm. quick lifestyle. You can come in, get out, but my goal is to feed souls with fast, fresh Thai bowls, and that's where um, age enjoyment came about. And you can get the wonderful Pad Thai. Yes, you there can. Enjoyment. Yeah. Okay. I love the spelling, the play on words, too. It's, it's great. It's so fun. Yeah. You might think it's the Asian who don't know how to spell enjoyment. <laughs> no, no, no. But we have. <laughs> I knew what you were doing. Yeah. But it's fun. Yeah. So. That is it. Then we add our vegetables and just to let you know, I like to turn off the fire before I put in the vegetables because the heat from the noodles itself is going to cook these down a little bit. I still like my bean sprouts and green onions. So yes, yeah. yes, and I like it all. So, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And you can do one of two things with the peanuts. In the restaurant itself, we put the peanuts um, on the side of the dish but you can literally stir it in if you wanted to. Mm. So I'm gonna switch this up right here. Ta-da! I made a double portion, by the way, right for there. all of us here. All right, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes. Asian That's right, so as simple as that, a little bit of peanuts, or a lot, however That's you like. Pretty. Would you like to try some? I would definitely <laughs> like to try some. There you go. Okay. Uh, pad Thai is honestly, we eat. It's hard to get a pad small thai. portion here. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm making you eat hot food too, so it's be careful. Really hot. <laughs> I, mean, I see the steam now that I mentioned that, so be careful. Pad Thai, you can enjoy at lunch, mm -hmm. breakfast, dinner, late mm -hmm. night, because it's an awesome street food, and that's kind of where it came about. It's How awesome. is it? It's great. It's good. Pardon me for eating. Talking with my mom. You're good. I keep doing that to you. We need to have some drama queen on there. Uh oh. <laughs> those, it is good stuff. For those brave hearts that want to try. Oh, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. Drama queen, some spicy. You want to try some? Yeah. That okay. Will work. Hey, Dean Fearing can do it. I can do it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Just be careful. Yes, be it very is a careful. spicy Thai crispy chili garlic that um, we're planning to import here from uh, Thailand. It will get you, but man, it's so good. No, yeah. Now that's Pad Thai that you can write home about. And uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Absolutely. That's wonderful. I may try that myself. You should. But I think I'd rather come and try it with you, with you at Asian Men. Uh, fine. Once you do it, you'll be like, okay, it's easy, but I don't want to do all the prep. <laughs> I can get it in five minutes. So. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Great to see you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right. Wining and Dining with Jim White. And thank you for joining us. Remember, if anybody asks you what you're making for dinner, tell them reservations at Asian Mint.